So I've had this MacBook Pro M1 chip version from 2020 December and that has been about four months. So this is my long-term review on the MacBook Pro. However, before I get into the video, I would just like to apologize that this video is late. Now, normally I strive to make sure I release a video the maximum of every two weeks, but the past couple of weeks have just been absolutely hectic with work. I've just not had a time to myself. I've not had time to film. So I just like to apologize about that. But in any case, I'm going to strive to make sure the maximum time between videos is two weeks. Right. Breathe. Anyway, back to your regular programming. Let's talk about this bad boy. So I've had this laptop for the past four months, right? And I absolutely love it, right? I absolutely love it. Now, I've had two MacBook Pros before this one. The 2013 version, which I bought in 2014, I had that one for five years, six years actually. I had that for six years and I only changed it last year. That laptop took me through uni, both my undergrad and my master's, and I absolutely loved it. It took me through about two jobs as well, so I absolutely loved it. Now, I decided to change because the battery life started to become an issue. So I got the 2020, the 1,600 pound version, the, the, the high-end M1, not M1, sorry, the Intel chip MacBook Pro that was released last early last year before this one. Now, that laptop was good. It ran fairly well, but my biggest problem with it still was the battery life. Now, the laptop again I had before was six years old. The battery life between that one and the new one was exactly the same. And I found that very, very disturbing. Now, when I say it was bad, I used to charge that, la that laptop twice, sometimes three times a day. And I was only using it for work. Like I was just using normally maybe Microsoft Teams, Zoom once a week. Uh, twice a week if it's really bad, but I was hardly using the laptop to what they said would be be pushing it I was hardly using it. Can you imagine they actually told me to stop using Spotify because Spotify was actually impacting the battery usage. So I was just like Really Spotify that's literally what you're going to tell me so That was a whole thing and I decided to sell that one and then I decided to get this bad boy This is the base level or entry level macbook pro with the m1 chip in it and it has been nothing more or nothing less than a phenomenon to me the battery life on this easily all day easily all day battery life like i don't even think about it i'll charge it so normally i i would charge like once a day so if i charge it today i won't need to think about it until later on the next day sometimes even two days if i'm not really using it that much so it has been nothing short of a revelation i absolutely love this laptop so that's the first thing. The second thing is how it runs. So this one has a fan, okay? It does have a fan in it. If you're looking, if you're thinking about comparing this to the M1 Air, it doesn't have a fan. So that one runs silently. This one, to my personal experience, has run silently. I think the fans have kicked on maybe once, twice. I can literally count the number of times the fans have kicked on, but it runs silently. It runs smoothly and it is very, very cool. This one, this is a much older version. This is an, an actual much older version MacBook Pro. This is a 20, 2011 version. And I've been using this for the past couple of days and it runs hot. Like you can literally be doing an update and the fans are literally about to take off. This one, not so much. I can be doing, I can have so many different apps running. I can be editing my videos, doing so many different things. The, the fans are just like, nah fam, you do you. We're here, if you need us, Call us. That's literally what they're doing. The fans never turn on. So this runs so silently and the performance is so smooth. You know, I generally thought I'd have way more issues with this one compared to like the previous ones that I've had. And I've had no issues with this. Of course, one thing that I'd want is more uh, ports because it's only got two Thunderbolt C ports and a U and um, audio jack port. Apart from that, it basically does nothing. But I do have a jack and an extendable thing there that I use, so that's perfectly fine. So you don't really need that many more, I would say, unless if you're a really tech tech guy or you're really doing a lot of video editing and a lot of those things, unless if you're a performance user, you're not even going to be buying this one, really. You're going to be going for something a bit better. But in my, in my honest opinion, even people that really need a performance-based laptop, this does perfectly fine. 
if you need someone that if you're someone that really needs a really graphics intense laptop i wouldn't say get this one but again for most people it will get the job done so the performance is really really good you can definitely play games on this i play games on this all the time but mostly in any case i don't really play absolutely like performance driven games i just play some really simple ios games which is something i find very interesting about this as well i've been playing among us i actually play uno believe it or not and a few other games in this normally when i'm gaming i go to my ps4 i just i prefer a controller in my hand i'm playing that so that's normally what i do when it comes to gaming but the performance on this laptop i genuinely have no complaints it has been phenomenal now you can't really talk about the performance without actually looking at something known as Geekbench. So now a Geekbench score is basically where it runs the, the laptop at a certain pace and everything. And basically it will give you a score as to how well the laptop is running, basically the chip and everything. Now this one had a single core score of about 1700 and the multiple score was about 7600 or 590 or give, give, give or take. And that absolutely destroys the previous one like destroys the previous one now apple claimed that you're going to get 2.8 they're about double, at least double performance when it comes to final cut pro or any of these other apps in my experience i have seen a notable difference right because i've edited I, I edit my videos and everything on this one and i used to use the other one as well and this one for me works amazingly well and i've literally got no complaints so when it comes to this one and intel they're they're really <laughs> it's sad to say it's unfair how good this laptop runs and uh if you haven't seen as well there was this guy that actually did an apple advert uh, it's called the apple guy in a sense and he actually recently did a video or an advert with intel as well so there's a whole big thing going on about how intel are really desperately trying to catch up to apple because the past few months has really been unfair and of course right now apple as well are going to uh are talking about doing an m1x chip for higher end macbook pros that will be interesting because the early scores are scarily good and if they're anything close to that intel are going to have a really hard time catching up with macbooks because it's just going to be it's going to be a bloodbath <laughs> It's going to be a bloodbath if they really don't like pull it up because basically you're not going to be looking at the price of the laptop compared to the performance these are going to kill it a lot because i mean one of the best laptops of last year was the macbook air the base model the 999 pound one this is the pro i just prefer the pro the fan option and everything a bit more power i just prefer that so yeah intel are going to be in a lot of trouble if they don't really pull their socks up because it's going to be a bloodbath if they don't now moving on to the looks of the actual laptop this laptop looks very nice now one thing that i am peeved about when it comes to macbook laptops is that i kind of feel like apple has neglected them and has really just put its focus on the iphone because really since 2016 there have really been like little little changes when it comes to this one and i genuinely think that they missed a trick last year in december when this one came out with the m1 I really thought that they should have revamped like everything when it comes to the screen, the way it looks, give it 4K, like just go go ham. Because if they did that, people would be so much more motivated to buy it and just say, look, this is the this is the future, this is the new Mac, you know what I mean? Like the new MacBooks, like it would have it would have killed it personally, I think. But they decided to stick to what they do, you know, Apple being Apple and just really change the interiors but the outside really hasn't changed the biggest thing of course that has happened in the past five years number one of course is the touch bar that is dividing people as always personally i don't mind it some people absolutely hate it but i think the general consensus is more people are warming up to it but i mean it is what it is eh? if you like it you like it if you don't you don't so that as well as the keyboard now before this one, it had something known as the butterfly keyboard, which was horrendous. Apple had so much cost when it came to replacing that one because you know there were so many reports of S stopping to work or A just work. Like it was, it was a really, really bad, badly designed, badly engineered keyboard that has so many problems. And I'm so grateful that they've changed it to this one, which is called a Magic Keyboard. Now, the Magic Keyboard is a combination of the Butterfly Keyboard and the one that was previously before that. They've put it together and they've got this keyboard. 
personally i like this keyboard it, it types well i'm very happy with it and i mean it is what it is it performs it performs fine way better than the butterfly keyboard which was a uh, <laughs> hot garbage but yeah it was just so bad so i would say if you're buying a macbook by the way stay clear of any macbook that has a butterfly keyboard you will in future yeah it's just not worth it it really 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 is not worth it but anyway when it comes to the design of this it, it it's nice okay it's very nice it is what it is it's a macbook pro again i really would have preferred them to change it a bit more but maybe for the other iterations they're just holding on on that so they can just say hey look we've got a new screen and everything and then charge you an arm and a leg for it in true apple fashion but i mean that's what people do these days they know they can change so many different things at once but they'll just delay it just a slightly bit so they can actually say oh we've changed something this year there's something new to talk about and all that but i think they should have changed more with it but in my opinion it looks nice the aluminium the my favorite one is space gray it just looks you know what i mean it's just really nice so apart from that it's really nice it's really like it's literally 1.4 kg compared to heh, this behemoth that is yeah it's heavy so it's really nice the screen is a retina display as 25 2500 by 12 i think it's 2560 by 12 so it's not 4k but it's got a really really good screen and it's even got a p3 white color which basically means it's giving a true to life color tone, which is very good for photographers or for video editors. If you want a laptop that's good for editing both photos or videographing, this is a really good one because it gives you that P3 white color adaptation and it will give you a really, really nice true to life tone of color. But apart from that, it's a really, really good laptop and yeah, really good. An interesting topic of conversation is the MacBook Pro or the MacBook Air. Now, when it comes to that one, there's so many videos out there, eh? There's so many videos that have so many different comparisons. I personally just think it comes down to what you want to do. If you're not really into all the, pro you don't really need all the processing power and everything, just save your money, get the MacBook Air. If you think there's something that you want, that you know you want performance for a very long time, probably get the MacBook Pro, but again, it's really open to what you prefer whether you want a fan whether you don't want a fan but one thing that's quite interesting about a, th uh, a fan is it basically helps something that is known as, uh, as thermal throttling now thermal throttling basically what it does is that when the macbook or your laptop starts getting hot it starts throttling the power that basically means it starts reducing the power because if you keep on putting on the power that is the performance the laptop is going to get more and more hotter now, you don't really want that because basically it's gonna cook the inside, so that's why there's a fan. The MacBook Air, again, there's so many videos out there, hasn't really been shown to thermal throttle as much as previous iterations. So, again, it's really up to you. If you've got the money, hey, go for this one. It'll work well. But if you've got the Air as well, it should do you plenty good. Like, it shouldn't really be that big of a difference, I would say. So yeah, just go with that. In conclusion, this laptop is ace. I absolutely love it. Are there any downsides to it? Not that I really have. Of course, you'd want more ports and a lot of other things, but to my knowledge, the way I've been using it, it's worked perfectly to my needs. Like, I generally have no complaints when it comes to this laptop. I'd have liked maybe the screen to be a bit better, sometimes a bit brighter, but I mean, that's just me nitpicking really. And one thing that I generally think is underrated when it comes to MacBook laptop is the touchpad. The touchpad is phenomenal. And it's so nice and big and the speakers on this as well are really nice so i really don't have any complaints about it so i would say if you're a person that's looking for a laptop that's small but powerful runs well has got great battery life as well as you just need you just need a really good sort of laptop i'll definitely recommend you to get this okay when it comes to editing and everything again i edit my videos with this it's perfectly fine it has no problems whatsoever but if you're a person that wants something that's really graphic oriented, I probably wouldn't get this. If you're a person that doesn't like Apple designs, of course, don't get this. But if you're a person on a budget as well, probably the other ones, again, the MacBook Air, I'll probably say uh, save your money and go and get that one. But you know, honestly, I would recommend this laptop to almost everyone. If of course they've got the money, if 
you on a budget again probably get the air but this is a really really good laptop eh? and i absolutely love it with this with this review i could have really gone way more techy talking about the five nano micro uh chip the m1 chip talking about all the separations and everything but there's so many videos out there you really just wanted to talk about the laptop and, and my personal experience to say look it's a good laptop i absolutely love it but anyway guys my name is caleb this is kind hd i hope you've liked the video i'll speak to you guys soon please like share subscribe and i'll see you guys on the next one peace